Hi guys, I hope you're having a good day. A few weeks ago, I did a video on my initial thoughts on FSR. It's not essential watching for this, but I will link it here. I'm going to assume you've heard of DLSS, um, but there is a whole bunch of videos on it from before I did YouTube, if not. I don't want to spend too much time before getting into the test results, so just a couple of quick notes on format before we begin. We will mainly be looking at the higher quality modes and the highest performance modes, because they are the ones that tell us the most. These options are not apples to apples comparisons, despite being next to one another in the options, so I've put the actual render resolutions on screen. More on that later. I'll be using an RTX 3070, and for the first game only, I'm using a 6700K. For the others, I will use a 5600X. So, yeah, on with the tests. Marvel's Avengers is first up, and we will begin with quality modes. There isn't actually much to tell them apart, frankly, except DLSS has a slightly higher frame rate and the lights are flickering, which is unpleasant. There will also be more on that as we go, but because there isn't much to see here, we will be moving on. Into the performance modes, and the first thing I want to point out is the 6700K I use for this test is actually bottlenecking because we are rendering at 1080p and 720p, so well, of course we're bottlenecking at those resolutions. However, both FSR and DLSS are hitting roughly the same GPU usage, so without the CPU bottleneck, performance would be roughly equal. What's not equal is the blurring on this blue door. While it is impressive DLSS gives us any detail at all while rendering at 720p, it just cannot reconstruct the text very well with so little data. Oh, and those lights are way worse than on quality modes. I do actually have a bunch of tests in this game, but honestly, those two pretty much cover it, so we're just going to move straight on. Next on our list is Edge of Eternity. This game actually runs with every setting maxed out at 4K on a 3070, around 60 FPS, so DLSS is kind of an odd inclusion. Being a JRPG with turn-based combat, 30fps would actually be okay, and there isn't much difference between 1440p high and 4k. So what that means is any card that has DLSS doesn't even really need it. In practical terms, that means FSR is the only option that really makes any sense here, as it is available on older cards. However, given that there are very few games that use both FSR and DLSS, we will be having a look anyway. On the highest quality modes, the only difference here is that DLSS, which is rendering at a slightly lower resolution, is producing a slightly higher FPS. Some testers, I'm sure, would be zooming on a snowflake or something to see which one looks slightly better, but considering you won't actually ever do that when you're really playing the game, I'm, I'm not going to do that. What I will do, though, is swap in quality FSR so that we are looking at the same render resolutions. And, well, this is kind of interesting. FSR now has a higher frame rate, and by a good margin, too. As for how they look, honestly, I'd say it's the same. But you're free to make your own mind up. Switching to performance modes now. And I've switched to the 5600X, so we don't hit a CPU bottleneck on this mode. And the frame rates are close, but a slight lead for DLSS. Visually, however, DLSS again has a shimmering effect, this time on the grass. Also, the detail on the rocks, as well as some of the trees, is slightly less defined. When we swap in DLSS performance mode instead, so they are both at 1080p render resolution, the shimmering does go away, and the overall image quality is pretty much the same, but now FSR has a consistent FPS advantage. Given the relatively modest visuals in this game, I think it's fairly easy to give FSR a bit of a win here. So last up, we'll be looking at Chernobylite, which I think I pronounced correctly, which uses Unreal Engine. And as FSR has engine level support in Unreal Engine, as well as being free to use for developers, this is probably the most important of the game so far. Jumping right into a forested section on the highest quality modes, visual quality is practically indistinguishable. The leaves, the bark, the fluttering grasses, at this distance all look pretty much the same. The frame rates are also level, and 
Well, they shouldn't be. DLSS is rendering at a lower resolution, which should really mean higher frame rates. It is also using tensor cores, which is a hardware advantage FSR doesn't have. Anyway, moving on to performance modes. FSR is, despite its higher render resolution and lack of special hardware, managing to produce slightly higher FPS. And while the visuals are again very similar between the two modes, if you look between the tree branches at the top of the screen, the LSS once again has its trademark shimmer. I did nudge the mouse a little, so the views are slightly off, but if anything, that should give TLSS an advantage as it's rendering slightly less trees. So that is the first set of comparisons out of the way. There will be a couple more later. I want to take some time to actually go over some of the details of FSR and DLSS before we draw in on our final conclusions. First of all, that shimmering effect that has been somewhere in all three of these games isn't just in these three games. I've also seen it in Cyberpunk and Metro Exodus. However, of the five FSR games I've tested so far, it just isn't present, which does seem a little bit strange when you think of this slide from Nvidia. Nvidia made this slide to say that DLSS has less of a problem with flickering images than traditional upscaling, but FSR is traditional upscaling, and it's the one that doesn't have this problem. I'm going to try and keep this as brief and non-technical as I possibly can, but the thing is FSR and DLSS are almost nothing alike, despite being next to each other in the graphics options. So while they both allow for greater frame rates at resolutions like 4K by rendering at lower resolutions, that is where the similarities end. So this slide from AMD about render pipelines shows clearly that FSR is an upscale pass and a sharpening pass after anti-aliasing, but before other post-processing. And I say other post-processing because that's sort of what FSR is. It's just the first two stages that you apply. This is done on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, and that's pretty important to keep in mind. The upscaling, in essence, is an improved Lanxos 2 upscale, and you've probably heard of that before. It's used in things like OBS. It is a little different, however, it skips some of the more expensive instructions and then implements them in a slightly faster way. This technique originally dates back to 1979, after the upscale pass is a sharpening pass, which is just a new version of contrast adaptive sharpening, which AMD have been using for a while. You may have heard of SweetFX, which goes back a really long time, to like DirectX 9 I think, and sharpening has been a thing there since at least version 1.4, which was 2013. It's not contrast adaptive sharpening for the record, just sharpening. CAS is newer, but not actually that new either. As for DLSS, well, I'm going to do a really, really quick version of what DLSS does, and I'm going to be missing a lot of detail. Anyway. DLSS completely reworks the render pipeline and does so using data from multiple frames and fancy AI stuff. Yeah, I did say a really, really quick version. And this is where the problem comes in. You see, DLSS is doing an insane amount of work and it's doing it on multiple frames at the same time, which is impressive, but somewhat problematic. You see, as frame rates go up, the render time for each frame gets shorter and quite noticeably, the DLSS has a lot of work to do on a frame, and moving data to and from tensor cores does cost a small amount of time. When you combine this with the need to work on data from multiple frames, you can see why DLSS has an issue with the small frame time limits that are required for high frame rates. So, I'm not a render pipeline specialist, I play video games and I make some YouTube videos. And do bear in mind I am trying to simplify this quite a bit. In Marvel's Avengers, the lights flickering are, I think, because the time it takes DLSS to do its thing means some, but not all of the frames, are called before bloom is applied, and that makes the flickering. I could be wrong about that, but something like that is happening. I know that's not the best explanation, but considering that's just a few sentences, and a good explanation is multiple 20 minute videos, it'll have to do. Anyway, terrible descriptions aside, you probably get why FSR is more sweet effects than DLSS. They are just very different on a technical level. So, I've put the actual render resolutions on the comparisons because that tells an important story that so far I haven't really touched upon. 
FSR typically matches DLSS frame rates while rendering at a higher resolution. When you consider DLSS has the extra hardware of tensor cores and the power of AI to help out, that really shouldn't be the case. So I have one final test area. Because of the lighting, it's not great for visual comparisons, but I did these tests purely focused on performance. Both TLSS and FSR are on quality mode, which means rendering at 1440p. While DLSS is managing around 75 frames per second, FSR is hitting 90. That's around a 20% improvement in frame rate. Reported VRAM usage should always be considered approximate, but FSR is using about 300 megabytes less at the same resolution. That is not massive, but well, it is also something. Moving on to performance modes, which both render at 1080p, and we can again see 20% higher frame rates approximately with FSR. VRAM usage is much closer, in fact, about 150 megabytes separate them now, which is small enough I'm basically inclined to ignore it, to be honest. While doing this, I was curious, so I thought I'd pair up FSR quality and DLSS performance. The result is perhaps not what you're expecting when FSR was announced. FSR here is rendering at 1440p and DLSS at 1080p. That's 33% approximately higher render resolution for FSR. Yet DLSS is managing less than 5% higher frame rate. I think at this point we have seen enough to draw a few conclusions regarding these two technologies, but there is just one more thing I want to mention before I do. These tests are focused on 4K for a good reason, as both FSR and DLSS require quite a lot of data to upscale from. Upscaling from low resolutions has pretty poor results using either method. I wouldn't recommend anything below balance mode at either 4K or 1440p, as lowering settings in either case is likely to be a better option. I also wouldn't want to use either of these at 1080p, as even on their best settings, results aren't great. That said, due to DLSS requiring at least 2060 due to the need for tensor cores, there aren't going to be too many situations where you're targeting a 1080p resolution as your upscale target, at least for now. For people who don't have an RTX card, there is only one option, and that gives FSR an easy win. However, for people that do have the option of DLSS, it's, well, that's just a win-win, to be perfectly honest. The title supports either technology, or indeed both. You have a choice, and one or two of the options is pretty much guaranteed to suit your needs. On a more subjective note, about which I personally feel is the better technology, I can't help but feel that because DLSS can provide such a visual uplift from very little data, that it is the better technological achievement. However, in the real world, that really doesn't matter, so I'm going to go with FSR hands down. FSR in most cases provides a bigger boost of frame rate, sometimes significantly. It is also way more accessible, which is definitely something to consider. In my mind, not only has AMD responded to DLSS, they have posed the question about what do we really need those tensor cores for anyway? If RTX GPUs had instead given the die space over to more RT cores, or perhaps just traditional FP32 cores, well, the GPUs would be faster in, well, in a number of situations. I expect, given the open source status of FSR, we will see it in many games soon, and it has been unofficially patched into some games already, although this typically doesn't have full access to the render pipeline, so it won't always be the most optimal implementation if you require the extra frame rate, it's probably worth the trade-off in visuals. And that's what these technologies are about after all, trading some fidelity for frame rate, and FSR being available to just about all current and indeed recent GPUs, I certainly hope it gets wide adoption. If it does, we all gain from that, and that goes for Nvidia as well as AMD owners. If you feel DLSS is the better of the two, and it does have advantages in some cases, then I'm sure you'll agree that having the choice of FSR is still a good thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. This was quite a lot of work, so if you did, I really would appreciate the sharing, liking, all that kind of stuff. In fact, sharing particularly would be useful because YouTube doesn't do a good job of promoting videos from small channels like mine. Anyway, please leave any comments or feedback below, and thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, take care of yourself, and goodbye.